Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. My name is Danny DeLillo and I'm here with Victor with his feature film, First Blush. Let's take a look at a clip. Victor, I'm so happy to have you in this virtual experience of a world. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. This is so weird, but this is so great. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> so weird and so great. I can, I can feel the love even from our computer distance. But listen, I, I'm so glad that you put um, First Blush in with our film festival, New Filmmakers LA. I loved it so much. I, I was literally glued to the screen because this story was so fascinating and you had such a great cast. For those that haven't seen it, tell us the brief synopsis of your film. Uh, it's, um, it's a polyamorous rom-com. It's, you know, it's a, a young married couple and they're doing all right, getting along, but then she becomes interested in another woman and then they all kind of attempt to have a three-way relationship and they hit all the same highs and lows as you would in any other love story, just with a little extra complexity on top. Yeah, I yeah. mean, really. really. What, what, where did the inspiration come for you in creating this film? Um, I, I think it was really kind of that. Like, I, I just really wanted to do a, as, as straight up of a love story as I could that hit all the, you know, beats that you would hit in any kind of romantic comedy. Boy meets girl, boy loses girl boy gets girl back, you know, there's the love, falling in love montage, all that stuff, but do it with three people instead of two. And I just kind of thought that'd be fun and an interesting challenge. And, and I thought I'd never really seen a movie like that before. Um, I was also developing a, a character. I really wanted to do a character who uh, was having a lot of anxiety issues and, and panic attacks and stuff. And I thought it would be interesting to see a character like that in a scenario like this, where she's feeling kind of even more out of her depth than um, a more, I guess, easygoing uh, person would. Yeah, I, I, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm looking back on the film that I've experienced. If you haven't seen First Blush, you know, you better pop your ears quiet for a second because I'm about to tell some juicy bits. But basically, it was so brilliantly put out. I've never seen this kind of like, you know, almost like throuple relationship before that's experienced. And no one's ever done it well or articulated it in a way that just feels real. Like I really believed every moment they were going through. And I really believed that they also had something to give each other that was so unique. And they learned things about themselves as well as, as, well as about each other. And I think the most thing that I loved the most as well is that it was really about this human connection with just another person. It could have been a guy, it could have been a girl. It doesn't matter. It was just this connectivity. Was that something that you just wanted to, you know, put out there with a film like this, but just, you know, kind of taking away all the presumptions of what we what we normally see in these kind of films? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you, you, you know, you don't see a lot of this type of relationship represented. And when you do, it's either like wealthy, good looking people who are looking to spice up their marriage and it's done in a very sort of sexy way. Like the emphasis is, is you know, a lot about the excitement and the sex. And I, you know, I get it, but it's kind of shallow. Yeah. Either that or um, it ends tragically. <laughs> you know, it's like people trying something and like their entire lives uh, falling apart or someone dies in the end or something. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I wasn't seeing a lot of like more uh, realistic depictions of uh, non-monogamous relationships. Mm -hmm. Also, I think I just wouldn't have the stamina to write something or, or to like follow through with it and direct it if it didn't have that sort of real human element. There would be no reason yeah. to do it. So almost by default, like I have to figure out why all these characters want to be together and like what yeah. the fuck it is and what they learn. Otherwise I just don't, there's no reason to do it otherwise. 
Yeah, no, I think, and, and, and again, I think from the, you know, almost from the very first moment, you know, you're, you're experiencing someone that is having anxiety um, and, you know, like it's so strange that there are little triggers that we all have as human beings that cause anxiety for whatever different reason. And it's okay to not be okay, you know? And I think I love that you did that without making it sort of like, you know, the term that we throw around, like, you know, mental illness, it's like, no, I'm, I'm actually having genuine anxiety in this given moment in time. And that's okay. And like, yeah. is that something you kind of also an area you wanted to kind of address in the film with obviously your, your central character? Yeah, yeah, I didn't want it to be a, like an, a, an issue film, like I didn't want it to be uh, like an exploration into anxiety. Yeah. I think anxiety is something that we, I mean, definitely now, and a lot of people I know, and certainly myself, is something that you live with. And it's a process trying to figure out how to deal with it. You can get therapy and medication, all that. You know, there are just so many ways you can try to maintain it and deal with it. It doesn't have to be the all-consuming only thing about you. Mm -hmm. So I look at uh, Nina, our main character, I look at her anxiety as sort of this thing that, well, she's, she's scared of, but she isn't, she'll, she'll sometimes deny it exists. So like, I see her as kind of like the road runner, or no, the uh, uh, Wiley Coyote, where she'll just decide, no, nope, I'm not gonna be scared. And I'm gonna like run off this cliff. And then she runs off the cliff and then looks down. And then she's like, oh, wait, I'm not, I can't do this. And then <laughs> yeah. she does it kind of over and over again in the film, which yeah. is something I, I find kind of relatable or sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for it. And then once you're doing it, you're like, wait, wait, uh, uh, you know <laughs> no absolutely absolutely i mean let's okay let's speak about your cast because they were perfect like yeah. i can't tell you their relationship was th their character oh um, how how did you get these brilliant actors and I, how, yeah. what joy <laughs> i'm so i'm so proud of them i'm so excited uh for people to be seeing them in this movie uh like it was my dream to you know give them as much as I could to like have, give them the opportunity to ha have like breakthrough performances, you know? Cause I think they're all great. They're all really special. Uh, I did all my casting online. I didn't know uh, anyone before oh, okay. casting the movie. And I just kind of waded through like thousands of reels. And you know, it's a big wide open casting call. So it was just a process of like trying to find gems and like a mountain of, you know, things. Uh, and then once they started kind of coming in, you know, it's really just waiting for the right people with the right energy to like walk in the door, you know, to, there's like some luck involved and just someone coming through the door and then being yeah. able to recognize like, oh, okay, I, I, yeah. So when Rachel came through and Ryan and Kate and, and all those, all those guys, it was just like, yeah, great, let's go. Um, like Ryan, who, who plays Drew, he was written maybe a little bit differently than he ended up being he was a little bit more like spock or something <laughs> in the script but he came in with this whole other i don't know he has this like weird like ethan hockey kind of uh intelligent sensitivity going on but all this stuff bubbling up under the surface and i'm like oh yeah that's cool that's like let's lean into that let's do that so you know you start adjusting for them to you know to make it all pop I thought the writing was so good and there were so many occasions I watched the film and I was like, I'm so glad she said that, or I'm so glad, glad they reacted that way, or I'm glad this happened because it causes a conflict that should be spoken about, which mm -hmm. was so refreshing. You know, sometimes you watch films, you're like, oh, why do they say that? But actually you put these characters in all three of them in vulnerable situations at certain times, but you know, it was all coming from a real place as well. Like, I mean, how was the process in that, in that respect, like, you know, writing something like this? And, and again, like, you know, I just think you took the Hollywood fluff away from it and it just yeah. felt like a story about three human beings going through different things and, you know, at, the, at that age of their lives as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it took a while. It took a couple of years to write it. Uh, I, I, after I wrote the first draft, I think I was depressed for like a couple months. <laughs> like, put it away, I was depressed. Because you... Oh, the end goal is to get it to the place where I ultimately got it, where it feels real and it feels earned and everything they say works. Mm -hmm. And then you try it and then you just see how deeply you failed on that first pass. And then you just want to go cry, <laughs> you know, but then you come back to it and you just keep working it and you keep ironing it. And then, you know, you get it as good as you possibly can. And then the actors come in 
and then you get it up on its feet and then you realize like, okay, 80% of this is working and the other 20% sucks and feels weird coming out of their mouths. So you just keep working it. And then as you're filming it, as you're shooting it, like you, I was adjusting lines like in every scene as we were shooting it. And then into the edit too, like I did so many passes on it and I would show it to people and I would kind of be tracking, is that connecting, is that connecting? And that took a while too. So I think just time and a lot of like very small adjustments to try and get the balance right. Yeah. I, would I would love to be able to do it faster. Maybe next time I'll be able to <laughs> speed that well, up a bit, but it, it, it took a while, yeah. I mean, it, 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 the time that it took, it worked out, you know, very well in the end. Um, with, I mean, so as a director, you know, like with, because it's such an acting performance, you know, it's, it, it involves a lot for the actors to really, really go deeply inside their character. How, how do you work as, how do you work as a director? And especially when it's your own, obviously you, you've obviously adjusted a few things in the script too. Are you a very uh, actor? Do you know, do you kind of work with the actors quite closely? Do you let them explore? How's your process? It's the only thing that I'm really, that I, I mean, I care about how it looks, care about how it sounds, I care about all that stuff. But ultimately if I'm watching a movie, I'm looking at the actors. I'm like looking at what they're saying. Like I, if, if that's not working, nothing's working. So I'm just there for each of them, however I need to be, however they need me to, to be there. I generally will like only give them as much direction as they feel they need. And you know, I'll kind of like check in with them before the thing starts and be like, you know, do you want to go over any of this stuff? Um, if they, feel like, no, let me just take a pass at it. I'm like, okay, great, go. Um, generally, the only adjustments I would make would be with dialogue. Like, I'm, I just kind of, I can get very specific with dialogue and be a little bit micromanagey with that, where I'm like, you said, you said they here, but I think it should be them, because yeah. it, 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 that kind of thing. Generally, if you get a good actor, they, they don't need a lot of helicopter parenting. It's just yeah. creating a space where they feel comfortable going for it you know yeah. and when they get there um so there's like a there's a big blow up scene where uh, nina's like yelling and crying and stuff yeah and that was a mixture of a couple takes but like the big blow up is like take three and i just remember being in the room and we take one was good but it was a little over here take one was take two was good but it was maybe a little too drunk and just like waiting waiting in the cut and then like when she really brought it on take three you felt the electricity in the room like yeah. the ph levels <laughs> change. Yeah, yeah yeah and you're just like so excited to be there for it and like it is it is like lightning struck and it's like okay cool 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 like oh. just setting up the conditions where something like that can happen is oh yeah. isn't it great i mean it's so nice when it works like that and you feel like yes this is what i want it's what I, it's why i made this film you know no, nothing better yeah uh, you know, it's so funny because I watching it like I I was so lost in the story and the words and the character. I kind of almost forgot where I was being taken in the film because I was just curious Good. about. Where, yeah, like really. But let's not underestimate. You had a lot of tricky, insane scenes that you had to put together. Like you know, I mean, the, the I mean, I know it was towards the end, but the moment I noticed you were doing a scene on the beach with that many people, all those things like. How was the, you know, from locations, all of those things, what was the biggest challenge that you kind of faced in making this project? Yeah, I mean, the beach was tough because we had all these um, background, you know, friends that were doing favors and also people that we uh, brought in uh, through uh, casting and just to kind of keep them there all day. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we got permits for the beach. So, and it was kind of like in the fall. So the beach wasn't very crowded anyway. So um, the biggest move we pulled that day was like getting uh, these birds to go at a certain point which was uh -huh. my production designer just like ran at them <laughs> at the right <laughs> moment. um so uh you know yeah i'd say the, the the trickiest day uh emotionally and psychologically was the uh, camping scene because we all had to go to angeles crest uh, forest and uh one of our actors had jury duty that day Oh, and she okay. didn't know if she was going to be able to get out and get there on time. And there's no cell reception. So we have everyone out there just waiting to go. And we don't know if we're going to be able to shoot. And people are like skipping work to go. And so that was a trial. But it all ended up working out. You know? Oh, oh my goodness. Thank goodness for that. I mean, let's not underestimate. I mean, this is a big film with a, a, lot, of, a lot of work to do in there. And I think, you know, there was 
so many elements in there that I was just, you know, fascinated with and, and how you kind of create atmosphere and the scene and everything else. Like, you know, obviously the, the whole kind of party experience as well. Like, you know, when you're kind of like, I mean, I'm just curious. And I think anyone that is making kind of bigger scenes like that, you know, as a, as a filmmaker, like, you know, creating that kind of, I mean, it felt like a full on party, but how, how long does an experience like that take to do? Cause it, it looked like a lot of work. Oh, I'm, I'm glad it feels that way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, basically, I, we, we called all our friends and said, can you come hang out for like two hours and have some beers like and be in the scene? And then yeah. you shoot all the wides first. And then yeah. once those are done, you get into the coverage where you, you've wrapped all your background and then you can just kind of like get into the close-ups and stuff. Like, I'm glad it feels as if party goers are there for the whole time yeah. because... Yeah, I would say it, like two thirds of the night they weren't there. We just kind of yeah. shot them first and then got into it. Yeah. See, the trickiest filmmakers is, is have beer and then people will come. So that they, right. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. that. Um, you know what? There's there's so many things I I feel about this film, and I think the one thing that you touched upon that I I love is that you kind of, you know, the way I don't want to give anything away for those who are haven't seen it, but the way it ended was so. I love the way that it ended. It wasn't how I thought it was going to end or how I imagined because I've seen other films and how they've ended it. And you're like, okay, it's, it's, it's this way. I love that so much. But what did you kind of want your audience to take from this film? Yeah, well, that's great. Um, yeah, if the, if the film had a theme song, it would be the Different Strokes main theme song, you know? It's like, yeah. you got to just do what works for you. And yeah, I, I think part of the ending being what it is is a reaction to again, other movies that are about this subject matter and how let down I kind of feel by those endings because I know people in, you know, non-traditional relationships that are doing just fine. <laughs> so I think it's okay uh, yeah. not to give it away, but like there's, there's no, there's no reason to, I don't know. There's also, I think part of the reason I wanted to base this on classic rom-com structure because you know it always ends with a wedding or it always ends with yeah. a whatever you know kind of thing it's like to be able to do that but then fuck with a little bit uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and uh you know to try and find an honest resolution that yeah. feels satisfying you know yeah yeah like, no, i think that's the nicest thing that, that, that i i really experienced watching it is that you you know i, I mean the thing about it is is that in any kind of rom-com or, or hopefully film experience, there's always something that you can relate to or, or learn about or be educated by. And I think there was so much like, I think everybody can have their own self-reflection of relationships that they've had or, yeah. or relationships they could have been involved in. Yeah, so that, I think it was great. fascinating to, to, you know, there's a lot of self, if you can't help when it talks about love, you can't help have a self-reflection. And I certainly, felt that but it was great to sort of like you know understand these people and so like you know what the way that you are it, it's okay or realizing this about myself it's okay the way that I am you know yeah and and also my dream for this movie is for people in relationships that have never even considered you know opening them up or, or whatever to be able to relate to it anyway because I think the stuff that they go through in this three-way relationship is the same exact stuff that people go through in any kind of relationship, you know, commitment right. issues, jealousy issues, uh, boredom, yeah. on we like all, all that stuff is, you know, it's just maybe like extra complicated because it's yeah. there's more, you know, dynamics and, and more people, but it's ultimately the exact same stuff that everyone goes through. So hopefully, hopefully it's a universal story about, yeah. but, but a more specific. Uh, no, definitely. I, I honestly haven't, I don't feel like a film has ever portrayed it um as what about about this kind of experience and also just the experience of just dealing with things about yourself like i just really love the way you articulate i think it's so good um what is next for you victor uh besides trying to um find distribution for yes. for this guy um i have a few i have another feature script that is ready to go but it's a little bit higher budgeted so hopefully i can start getting that on its legs when this pandemic is over I also have a couple of pilots, um, so I'm trying to get those going. Really, honestly, though, just trying to make it through the year. <laughs> like, I just know, trying right? to make it through this year intact. I think, you know, if I can get this up on its legs and, and you know, make it to 2021, I'll call it a win for the year. And uh, Yeah, 
know, I, I, <laughs> I think I, it's one of those other stuff made after that. I, well, I mean, it's I mean, it's amazing just to kind of keep creative, uh, you know, during the things that people are going through. And I, I'm so glad that, you know, you've, you've kind of saved us all with your art um, to, to have a film about relationships. Cause I think there's so much going on in our worlds that, you know, we almost, you know, we need sort of other guidances and films are so important to help, help us understand ourselves a bit better as well. So I love that it's very timely, your film in a very interesting way. Uh, you know, not to mention we miss human interaction. Um, but at the same time, what, what, um, you know, I mean, this was a, I mean, I, I think this was a, a really, really fantastic, fully loaded feature that just felt, it was just perfectly put together. And so I'm glad you took the time that you did. Um, but for any filmmakers out there, particularly maybe filmmakers that are trying to embark on making their first feature or, or, or things that you've heard in your, in your world, do you have any advice out there for any filmmakers? Yeah. Um, if you're going to go for it, I treat it like a pool shot. You don't take the shot until you know you can make it. Ooh. That doesn't mean wait forever to take the shot, but just line it up the best you can. And then the, the hardest part is just starting, I think, because you're, you're worried you're going to miss the shot or whatever. Yeah. But it just don't just fire at will, but like get as many arrows pointed in the right direction as you can. And then just go for it and don't hesitate. And like once you're going, keep going, you know? I think it's, I love it's, that. Yeah. I've never heard that before, Victor. That's that's awesome. Um, that. Listen, thank you, Victor. Thank you for First Blush. It was so, so good. You have to see this. So please follow um, First Blush on its journey. And uh, I can't wait for it to be available everywhere so the whole world gets to see it. But thank you, Victor, for being here. And thank you for bringing to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. Thanks so much for, for taking the time with me. And yeah, thanks to New Filmmakers. Uh, you guys have been so great throughout this whole thing and yeah support new filmmakers everyone